I think we're working. Here we are in December with Martha Walksmith and Lewis Walksmith in this uh, nice little camera here. What I want to know is, how did you get involved with making that plaque? Were you involved in the Skidmore Fountain Village development? No, it was more or less through Chet that I did it. And I don't remember exactly how he started me on it, but <laughs> uh, I just made it, you know, and took it out to um, oh, a plaque place out off of Columbia Boulevard. They fired it? Portland. And uh, and he fired it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't go to any of the Skidmore Mountain Village meetings or anything like no. that? No, I didn't. No. I wasn't involved in that. Was that, uh, so you don't have any memory who chose those trees around our block or anything like that? No, I don't. I don't have any real information about the area in a way. Oh, okay. Chad never talked about that sort of thing much, you know. He didn't? No. Oh, oh. Oh, that's too bad. I'm trying to, you know, get a few memories and sure. who did what. Now, Tucker and I were talking yesterday about the good old days where we were upstairs in 1964 and our dads had us clean the upstairs out. You remember uh, Tucker coming home being filthy dirty after uh, he was... Which time? <laughs> oh, we worked all summer no. on that project. Yeah. And looking back, it was, uh, uh, Tucker and I were saying, you know, that was a lot of fun, even though it was filthy hard work. But all that stuff was stashed up there for I don't know how many decades. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. If this is 64, it looked like a lot of stuff had been up there for 20, 30, 40 years. I don't know. I was trying to think of the um, year that we sat up in the upstairs and watched the Rose Festival Parade. It uh, went by on, uh, let's see, it was, uh, was it second? Second. I have yeah. a picture of that. I think it went by on second, yeah, and we sat there and watched it go by. Who was we? Uh, oh gosh, I think Grandma Walksmith. And, oh, you know a lot of the family. Because I have a picture, a black and white picture. I just looked at the other day and says, "Oh, and I remember the the pictures when I was a kid." Yeah. But uh, by then they diverted the, uh, uh, they the went parade. They put it up on third or fourth. Yeah, 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 which is fine. So uh, anyway, Tucker and I were saying all those nice antique doors up there. We they all got thrown away and. Uh, oh. Really? All that uh, we discovered more um, treasures that uh, we didn't know at the time, but now it'd be worth a lot of money. But uh, yeah, that was '64. You don't know why. Well, of course, grandfather bought the thing in '57, and then uh, in did six he buy it in '57? Because he died in '57. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The newspaper articles I uh, have is that he he bought it then, and then he shortly passed away. Yeah. Do you remember how he bought it from the Bickle daughters? Sisters? No, I don't. I remember going up to the Bickle house with, I think Tucker went up there too, and it was interesting uh, to see the old house after they had passed on. Oh, oh, now the yeah. story I heard is that Mr. Bickle had the building built years and years, 1880, and then he passed it on to his daughters and he died. And apparently Louis Charles was constantly pursuing the girls to sell it to him. Is that That's right? Probably so. I yeah. wasn't involved in that either, you know. I really was never much involved. And the only thing I did connected with the oyster bars, I used to go down there on Thursday when your father would go and play golf, and I would take cash then. Really? Uh-huh. You play golf with Narver? Probably. All the I, boys? Yeah. At the golf club? I'm not sure where uh, they went. What, I, what year was that? Well, that was when we were living over in Westmoreland, so it had to be oh my goodness. in the 50s, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I wouldn't remember that. I have a couple memories of your house over there. I think I remember some friend or a relative child who had webs between his toes or his fingers. You don't remember who that was, I bet. Well, my father had a tendency. He always said he was related to a duck because he had a oh. certain amount of webs between his I toes. I thought that was a child my age, though, so I don't no, remember. No, that, oh. I don't know who oh. that was. That's about the only memory I have of that over there. Yeah. And one time they announced that you'll be moving to our side of the town. Yeah, let's see, we moved, uh, well, it was the year that Cher was born, 54. Uh -huh. Oh. We moved. Hmm. And we lived uh, from about 46 until 54, so we yeah. lived 
Yeah, about eight years. Mm. And you know that old uh, Narver field there is now all houses. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, Luann sold her house to Corey, and Corey sold it to someone else. So our old house is uh, owned by somebody else now. I haven't been. Have they changed it at all? Or I don't know. I don't know. There's not a whole lot you can do. I've been by there right lately, but. Yeah. 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 So. Well, I brought. I told you last time that I have a document that you signed back in 1951, and you probably haven't seen. So I brought that document. Oh. And so here it is. In. The, you and Chester signed it. See if that brings back any memories. Let me see. Hmm. See anybody you recognize there? I recognize your mother and your father. I was trying. No, that's to me. She signed my name down there. I don't think he signed it, or maybe nah. Luann, Louis Wonksmith. Yeah, you probably didn't sign that. <laughs> Betty Wagner. That name sounds familiar. Oh, Mrs. Wagner. Yeah, she was on my mother's side. Yeah. Was it I Betty and Betty? Yeah. Yeah. She, she was uh, old at that. And Helen Crowley. That name is familiar. The Crowleys would be on uh, my father, my mother's side somewhere. Yeah, I yeah. think her father, mm -hmm. on her father's side maybe. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know any. Of the, well, I knew, of course, knew you and Chester. And there's Norm Nilsson. He's there. I remember him from the old uh, neighborhood. Oh, Christina Cottle and Martha Wags and Chester Wags and Louis, Elizabeth, Bess Sauer. Hmm. Let me see who else I remember here. I don't remember a lot of these people. Well, it was only a few years ago. It would be, what, 60 years ago, almost? Yeah, I just, um, what was the occasion of this? Oh, that was our 50th anniversary. Myrtle and Joe Lakemeyer. Oh, yes, gosh, yes. Do you remember Myrtle at all? Oh, yes, I remember Myrtle. I don't remember Joe very well. Oh. He died before she did. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was uh, out in a rest home or a, a care home for mm -hmm. a long time. And I remember your mother used to go and visit her a lot of yeah. the time. Took yeah. Tucker and I one time. What? He took, it took Tucker and I. And oh, good. Well, uh, Tucker was a little grossed out. Oh, Roy Sinner. I remember Roy Sinner. I, I don't remember... What, was he a relative or just a friend? How no, he... just a friend. In fact, he was the one that uh, sold milk to the oyster bar. Oh. He was in Sunny... Sunnybrook Brook Dairy? Dairy, yeah. yeah. He was the head of that. Oh, oh. And that was how we got to know the sinners, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, oh, let's see. Jane Sauer. Sour would be from my mother's That'd side. Be on the, yeah, your mother's side. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That would be grandmother's side. side. Yeah, that was grandmother. She you, was you, sour. Yes, that's right. Yeah. How did someone as sweet as you come to be called sour? Remember <laughs> that? <laughs> oh, dear. Those are the main people that I recognize. There are a lot of people I don't. You don't remember where the occasion was held, do you? No, I don't. Uh, I really don't. I feel. Well, Luann gave this book to me last year. She found it somewhere. Hmm. Could have been held at your folks' house, don't you think? I don't know. I don't remember who in Myrtle House she was related to my mother. My sister knows all that. I should write that down sometime who was related to who. I go up and see Aunt Myrtle and Uncle Joe in their grave once in a while, say hello to oh, them. Really? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, I just. Uh, it's strange, but I. Don't really remember the occasion much now, you know? Oh, of course not. <laughs> no, it's been a. 
married from 1901 to 1951? Yeah. Mm. And Is in that the, when Joe died? Just about that time. I think I was yeah, a very, very young been. person. I think uh, Myrtle might have lasted another five or ten years or something like that. She did last longer, I think. Yes, yeah. yeah. She was in a, but she wasn't able to do much. But no, no. No, it was kind of sad. Yeah, she had that uh, apartment she lived in there on uh, 9th Avenue, Southeast 9th. Oh, really? Yeah, we used to go visit her, uh, Louisiana and I. Uh -huh. And then she went to nursing homes. My mother and I would go out there. We took I Tucker out. I was never out. close to her. I just would meet her occasionally, you know, at, at your folks or something like that. Uh huh. That's my only memory of her. Mind. Yeah, I have just a few memories. I just. Uh, and Joe, I think he was the first one to give me a haircut when I was about three or four years old. It was probably the worst experience of my life. <laughs> he said we sat on the stool in his in our house for hours. It seemed like he just took his time. He didn't have electric clippers. He had a, the kind you use like this, and uh, he just slowly went over my hair, real slowly. I just sat there and sat there. Did he do a good job? I don't know. I think that put inside of me a hatred of getting haircuts, and to this day. I just dread getting a haircut because I hate sitting there and having somebody mess with my hair. <laughs> Isn't that strange how something like that could... But it is true that a lot of things that, you know, we grow up hating happen because of some dumb thing in our childhood. Yeah, yeah. Then I was, uh, oh, I was going to ask you about that incident again where the skunk in Camp Tagum, <laughs> it was at night, and you thought it was your dog. You reached down and tried to pet the... Well, we were coming in. We had driven in, and we parked out on the road uh -huh. uh, that goes to the point, you know. And we were walking in toward camp. And, uh, yeah, I felt this. I thought it was uh, my little dog. We had Tagum then. Uh -huh. And I reached down to pet it, and all of a sudden it... Uh. Oh, gosh. I've got a little skunk that your sister gave me in memory of that that I've always kept. There it is. There it is. See? Wasn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Yes. Just get a picture of that thing there. <laughs> now, what time of day was that? Oh, gosh. I thought it was at night and you had to go out in the... Uh, it was sort of dark because I certainly couldn't see. Yeah. And someone had a flashlight, but I didn't have one. So you went out and bathed in the uh, bay? Um, took uh, tomato juice and... and um, you run the store for tomato juice, I wonder? And rubbed it on and went out in the bay, yeah. In the bay. I hope it was a warm night. Well, you know, in August it's usually reasonably okay. Yeah. And the water was probably not too Seven, cold. Yeah, maybe. 70 yeah. degrees or something. But, uh, yeah, and I never ever got the stink out of the jeans that I was wearing. Well, how'd you sleep at night in a sleeping bag? How'd I sleep at yeah, night? Yeah, I mean, didn't you, you're, you come to bed in the tent, right? You were sleeping in tents at that time? Yeah. It was a little army tents? Uh-huh. And so the whole tent must have stunk a little bit. Well, see, I went out in the bay and washed it you all You got most of it off, huh? But I took the pants off and left them outside. Yeah. I didn't take yeah. them in. Yeah. And then, as I say, I took them home and I washed them and all, but yeah. I never was able to get the stink out of them. Yeah. Well, see, I got sprayed by a skunk in my backyard. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I was, had a catch in my live trap, and I, I was trying to catch a stray cat. Instead, I'd go out there as a skunk, and I well, I know they're dangerous. And so I took a big blanket and I, you know, uh, held it out of my arms walked toward the skunk slowly so I thought I was being just bright but the skunk he turned and shot me complete accuracy in a matter of a split second I didn't know they could you move that fast that very yes fast. yeah and they, they shoot accurately and I got sprayed all over and so <clears throat> I called the uh, some kind of um, animal pickup critter getter they called and I said just take it away uh, whatever you want to charge me keep the cage keep everything but I didn't know what to do with that live skunk so I had to throw away all my clothes, too. You did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no way of getting it out, really. No, it's clothes. amazing. Yeah. And tomato juice does help in washing yourself and getting it off your skin anyway. Yeah. But I do remember using the tomato juice. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, then we had a skunk uh, the other day. Someone was eating our cat food. We had a cat, my daughter's cat. And uh, at 10 o'clock, my wife looks out there, and there's a skunk out there eating that cat food. And uh, so we hid the cat food away, but that skunk could come back every other night and looking for that. To check, yeah. To check, yeah. And see, I tell you, uh, don't want those things around anymore. No, no. I don't know what you can do to scare them away. But... No, there's only food out. The cat died. <laughs> so now we don't have food anymore. Oh, that, that helps a little bit. That's what you need, a nice kitty here, don't you? No, thank you. No, nice have puppy. To change the, the little pad, you know. I mean. The, yeah, the, yeah. That's a hassle. I've gone through that before. Oh well, when I, when yeah, pets. I was pets. living in that apartment up on uh, up on the hill, you know. Uh huh. Why well, I, I had a cat up there. Yeah. And I kept its little drip pan in the bathroom. And had to dump it all the time. And uh, it's a hassle. You know? Well, you get older, you just having pets is more trouble it's worth. It really is. And if you have a dog here, then you have to take it out and walk it. That's not easy. But they're allowed to have small dogs. Uh huh. Dogs they can carry yes. in and out. Yeah, and still it'd be a hassle to go down in the middle of the night, the dog wants to go potty. No, thank you. <laughs> now, you know, I have a sister. Yes. She has a dog. Oh, I know. It, it looks more than like that. a horse. <laughs> so I just it huge. <laughs> well, it's a little worse than that. Uh, I was over to her house for uh, Christmas Eve dinner. I escaped my own family because I have in-laws coming and I don't want to be around necessarily. Uh, I'm a crab. So I had Glenn made a real nice dinner. Oh, good. And we had uh, Fran's Bakery donated ham. And he made uh, potatoes and uh, baked a pumpkin pie. And to join us for the meal was the big dog, because <laughs> the table's this high, and the dog's head is this high. Yeah, yeah. And so the dog would come over and jam its head Isley. between us. Isley jam its head and like that, and <laughs> the lips and the slobber. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, I know. And then I had Luann would probably kill me if I told you all this, but great big cow bones on the ground. See, and that dog would pick up these big cow bones about as big as a child's head. And crunch them and break them in half. <laughs> it was very. I know she tells me that uh, her kids do not want her to have that dog. Gee, I know that. Yeah, they just hate having her have the dog. I don't know. Maybe Glenn has kind of made peace with it. I guess he likes the dog. Well, okay. Luann claims that he's bonded with the dog and he takes the dogs for walks. Yeah. And that, that's who I've heard it from, from Luann. I've not heard it from Glenn. Well, <laughs> no, but Glenn was a real nice host that night and he Good. was, uh, we had a nice conversation, talked about the old times and uh, him working down at the Oyster Bar oh, and the times he came down the coast to visit me when I was working down there and so it was a pleasant time. Good, good. Glenn can be awfully nice. Yeah. It's just too bad some of his uh, Personal Drinking habits. And, you know, yeah, and, and gambling habits are just yeah. really keeps him constantly broke. <laughs> keeps him a little on edge, too, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting it mildly. <laughs> now, Danny, what are you, uh, Danny was here for three days. Uh, what's he doing in his life? Um, he works for the loves, you know, people that live, they have yes. a. They're wealthy. Big home there uh -huh. in, in St. Louis, and they have property up in Maine, and they have several houses up there on the property. Oh, and they uh, they go up there sometime during the summer, but Dan maintains the property. Oh, that's a good thing. Uh, off season, and so he's taken his family up to Maine, and they love it up there. Uh huh. It's really nice in the summer. Because it gets steamy hot in St. Louis in the summer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, He's still at home base, still St. Louis. Yeah. And uh, he is, yes, Ben, of course, is a doctor here in town. Benjamin, right? Right. And he goes to uh, the church called uh, Amego Deo or something like that. Really? I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really, I don't keep much in touch with no. him. Have you seen him? Has he come over to visit or anything like that? Oh, well, we used to go over and visit him. Uh -huh. Of course, when Cher had that dog that she had, uh -huh. that Sharpe, why, um, he was very protective of the property and scared people so that 
we didn't encourage people with children to ever come by oh. much then. Oh. And uh, but we used to go by and see Ben and Rachel. Mm. But we haven't in the last few years. Yeah, last time I attended, I did go to. The, oh, I saw you at the open house. Yeah, at their house. That's where I. That was uh, two summers ago. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah my mind slipping. Their new see. House. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was a, a pleasant time. It's really nice, yeah. Now, did Danny have six kids, is that right, or five kids? Ben? Uh, Dan, Danny. Oh, Dan had six, yeah. He had six, yeah. The, the last was sort of a, just a happening. Let's Those things say. happen. Yes. Yeah, I didn't plan my because, last two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really wanted to have a girl, so I, I'm uh. afraid I planned chair. Oh. It's my fault. <laughs> Oh, well, those things happen. But, um, no, Isaac is so much younger, you know, than the other ones, because he's just entered college this year. Uh-huh. And that's Dan's youngest one is in college. You're right. The time goes fast, doesn't it? I know. Yeah. Gee. Well, my oldest son just uh, hit 40. So uh, my youngest is 30, and uh, I, I still see myself as a teenager, you know, coming over to your house, eating <laughs> ice cream, and that... In that great big milk machine from Sunshine Dairy oh, or something. Yes, yes, all the milk you could drink, you got them by three-gallon yeah. containers. And looking back, uh, that's a lot of milk to drink. Yeah. Boy, they did drink the milk. They mm. really did. Yeah, and you had great big ice cream things there from the oyster bar, I guess. And it, oh, my goodness, it was just glorious. <laughs> Tucker apparently is very happy to have the clock, too. Oh, yeah, I bet. I think I he said he, he got running or something like that. Always wanted that clock. That yeah. was the one thing he really wanted. Yeah. And then Doug got the uh, two chairs from the dining room and the cabinet from the dining room. Uh huh. It fits very nicely in their house. Mm -hmm. I was over there for Christmas dinner, you know. Oh. So it was, it was Who fun. else was over there? Who else? Yeah. All of Doug's family. Uh, Beth, See, Beth too? And, yeah, Beth oh. and Jonathan were there with their three children. Oh. And uh, then Stephanie and Ted with their two. And Five. Michelle and Mike with Six, their... Six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, with their three. So they're... Eight. Eight children, yeah. Uh-huh. But they were well-behaved. Oh, that's and, good. You know, they're old enough now to be interested in running off and looking at something in the computer room and oh, stuff like yeah. that now and then. Yeah. Then we all sang Christmas carols together yeah. a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's all right. I better, I'm going to turn this off now yeah. because... Uh, oh, good, we're recording. Here we're visiting with uh, Martha Van Fleet Walksmith, and behind me is Cher, her daughter, and we're going to have a little discussion about family members. How did you ever first get involved in the Walksmith family? Well, I met um, Chet down at Stanford. We went on a blind date together. We were in, introduced by a Sigma Chi, I think. And um, so we went on a blind date together. And then, uh, I don't know, we went out, kept going out every now and then, and then we decided to get married Oh. when the war came along. What year was that? Uh, well, it was about 1940. We actually were married in 41. Oh, boy. But um, um, Chet was going to be drafted into the Army. It was before the war started. Uh-huh. And uh, he was drafted. But we got married just before that, so... But he didn't go overseas, though, did he? No, he didn't ever go overseas. See, he got in before the war started, so he got into plans and training for the new group coming in. Oh. oh. And he stayed in plans and training right straight along. Uh-huh. And he was sent to <clears throat> Camp Callan down near La Jolla, California. And we lived down there. That's where Dan was born, our first child. Yeah, Dan would be uh, 67 now, isn't he? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, exactly four years older than me. He was a big, important person in grade school. Dan, he was, you know that. He had a rock band he could play, and he was impressive. He sang, yeah, and played the guitar. Yeah, yeah, Buddy Holly and all that. Huh? 
<laughs> and then by the time I got to high school, he was long gone, of course. Yeah. Well, uh, you're a college graduate then? Well, I didn't graduate then. I left uh, two quarters into my junior year, so I had a year and a quarter to make up. So I went back after 28 years to Portland State and got my uh, graduation. How can graduated. a person go back after that many years and pick up all that stuff? That's not easy. It was amazing. Yeah. It really was. And right at first, I was kind of uneasy, but pretty soon, it was kind of neat, you know? You concentrate more on your studies when you're not young and looking at the boys and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what year was that you were back there? How old were you when you went back to school? About 50. 50? Oh, I don't think I could do that now. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Yeah. You know, your mother is the person I remarkable. I remember that one day she decided she's going to stop smoking, and she just stopped smoking. And that was uh, 40 years ago or more than that? It was in 1943. No. Oh, no, it was after that. No, no, it was after that, 1964. 64. It was the year my mother died. Oh. And one of the reasons I think I was kind of encouraged to quit was because she had emphysema. Uh -huh. She had never smoked, but my dad smoked day and night practically. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, she couldn't tolerate the smell of cigarettes in the, where they lived, so yeah. I had to smoke outside. Then I started coughing a little and I thought, this is stupid to keep smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so I did quit. What did you get your degree, degree in then? Uh, English, and then I got uh, extra in teaching. Uh huh. And so I did uh, practice teaching up at Wilson High. Oh, you did? I didn't know yeah. that. What year was that? Oh, uh, what year was that, Cher? Do you remember? Gosh, let's see. I actually Seven. graduated in. 71, I think it was. So it would have been around 70. So it must have been around 1970. Oh, I was long gone by then. 71, yeah. I didn't know you were there. And then I, uh, well, I was just there, you know, as I say, just yeah. one semester. And then, um, then I did some substitute teaching for a while mm -hmm. because there wasn't an opening right away in the school. You know, they sometimes need teachers and other times they don't and they didn't that particular time mm -hmm. so i just did substitute teaching and that's a hassle no yes it's always fun to pick on the substitute you know to trick that's the right. poor person that's right and learn how to bully them and you don't know who the good guys and the bad guys are you yeah. know when you first go into a class like that but i remember one class when someone said oh, i have to go down the hall and um, one of the other boys said, oh, you can't fool her. She's not going to fall for that one. I said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I was old enough to, they wouldn't take advantage of me as much as they would a younger person. You remember our Carolyn Miller uh, English teacher there, do you? Oh, yes. Carolyn Miller, oh. you know, was... Uh, the one that pushed Tucker with his uh, paintings and all that sort of thing. Uh huh. And uh, she had a gallery, didn't she, or something? Yeah, she displayed Tucker's uh, artwork one yeah. time. Then she went on to be uh, county commissioner, and then now she's got her own website and she's writing books. And she was my English teacher there too. And uh, I did I did naughty things to her. Why, Louie, I can't believe it. Well, Can you share? No. She was a fun person, or is a fun person, and so I got some disappearing ink in a squeeze bottle, see. And after class, I came up to her, uh, Miss Miller, you've pushed me far enough. I'm going to get you back. And I sprayed her with disappearing ink. And she said, Louis, this better disappear or something. And I walked out laughing, and I thought, you know, what a stupid thing to do. I could have got fired for that. So, I mean, I'm late, what do you say? Put in jail or something. Expelled. You wouldn't want to do that now. Expelled, yeah. Expelled. I didn't know. It was just an innocent prank to me, but I was stupid. But she, she taught me to like Shakespeare. She was a good oh. teacher. Yeah. 
So you did uh, teach for a while. Now you don't want to go back to it now. Well, and then also I was uh, working when I wasn't uh, doing uh, substitute teaching. When I was working for Father Hagen out at the University of Portland. So he was legally blind, uh -huh. and uh, he taught uh, history, and he had to have everything done on a big typewriter, and uh, he could, you know, by getting like that, he. Had, he had vision out of one eye, but oh. he had to have it up like this to be able to see it. And uh, anyway, but he kept on teaching. You were a typist? Well, you know, I did, I'm not what you'd call a really proficient typist, but I managed to get along. Yeah, I took typing in uh, high school, I got up to 20 words a minute. Wow, I took typing yeah, in I high school. I got up to 55. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was good. <laughs> I was terrible. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, um, then finally Father Hagen said, well, you know, could you possibly work for me full time? And uh, by that time I was kind of, it was the end of the semester and I'd have to go back and take more courses to be able to keep my teacher certificate. So I said yes. It's oh. a lot easier than struggling through that again. Yeah, they make it tough to they say do. a teacher. Yeah. yeah, teachers always have to go back during the summer usually and take a couple of courses. Many times at your own expense too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, my son Andrew now, you know, he's a high school teacher in the Beaverton district. Oh, really? And he's taking class after class after class, so he's slowly working himself up in the hierarchy there. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Now, this year, in order to cut back, they've given him 45 students per class. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but the good news is, part of them are high achievers, and part of them are the lowest achievers, and the ones in between speak uh, Spanish. <laughs> How does he manage? Well, uh, he takes everything pretty easily. As you know, as a teacher, you, you have to, and you got to roll the punches, I guess, and as you found out, it's just... Uh, but being teacher is harder now than it was. I'm sure. Does he speak Spanish? Yes. He spent oh, a year helps. in Honduras and so he did well at well that. that helps a lot. Yeah. Because you know, so I wouldn't know anything. I took Spanish in college for a year, I think, but it never stuck because we didn't talk it. We didn't, you know, you have to really be around people speaking that. So Doug, he took a year of Spanish too and I don't think he uh, has kept up on it. Mm. I couldn't take any foreign languages because I was too stupid. I just felt didn't. I did take math and science though, and that was. I took French and then I took Spanish. So French I got them too. All mixed up, yeah. Oh. I did really well always the first semester because I did well in grammar and that sort of thing, but as far as remembering vocabulary, forget it. Yeah, that's the key. You've got to that's use it all the key time because you're not hearing it enough yeah. to be able to assimilate. You know. And uh, pronunciation in French is awful. <laughs> it's so different. Did you have to put marbles in your mouth or something to practice? I or? think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> or marbles in your head or something like that. Yeah. Well, you got your marble. <laughs> at, one of my memories at your house when I used to come over and visit there. And by the way, I want to thank you again for having me over for dinner once a week after oh, my mother died. I was very glad to. It was just. I used fun. to bake a cake and bring a cake over. <laughs> you were really neat. Nice to have you. Really. Well, thank you. It was you. fun to take you down to the um, Oysterville, north of Oysterville, when we used to go camping. Well, thank you for that camping. too, yes. Yeah. And that was when your mom was still around. When, oh yeah, well, I was yeah. young, yeah. Because yeah. when you all got older, you sort of scattered and didn't all come down at the same time and stuff. What year did you first start going camping and why did you start doing that? Uh, Luann was 11 and Dan was 4 mm -hmm. and uh, we went and stayed with Aunt Louise. Mm -hmm. Chet was the one that sort of got things going that way because Louise was his aunt, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how he worked it out, but he did. So we stayed there for three years running. We took our vacation and stayed at Louise's. And then uh, we met Arthur Nelson. Good old Art, yeah. Yeah, and Arthur Nelson said, gee, it's a wonderful place to go camping down there. 
on the peninsula. You ought to, you ought to do that. So that's what we, when we started camping out then. Oh, and the time I got there... We'd been camping out for some time then, I think. Yeah, but then you started checking out and you brought a little trailer up there. Oh, that one time, yeah, and Cher was a little girl. Uh-huh. Another time you stayed at the Moby Dick, I think, or somebody yes, did. Yes, I think we did, yeah. And then you stayed at the hotel in uh, Ocean Park. Uh, then we stayed at that motel, yeah, yeah, which is no longer a motel. I don't know what it is now. No. Do you remember what it is? Remember where we used to stay, that corner? The Jackson. Sam Jackson, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it isn't the Sam Jackson anymore. No. So you got uh, a little uh, soft and had to go to the hotel. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, well, I had some physical problems, you uh -huh. know, after Cher was born. And I really couldn't, uh, you know. But sleeping on the ground isn't easy. No, we did have uh, air mattresses, you uh -huh. know, so it wasn't super bad, but it's still not the greatest. It's the think, damp out there. Oh, yes, yeah, and you had those heavy tents, those military-style tents. Yeah. And, oh, goodness. And then when the skunks would come in and go through the garbage at night. Yeah, yeah, they were always <laughs> exciting. Now, that time the skunk sprayed you... We were coming from yeah. where we parked the car on the road, coming into camp through the woods there. Yeah, that terrible, scary path. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was it. Uh -huh. And I thought it was uh, uh, Tagum, the little dog, coming up and rubbing against me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, pew, I discovered it was a skunk. And it sprayed all over your leg? And it sprayed on my leg, yeah. Yeah, and but you had to go out in the ocean or in the bay there to wash it off. With uh, tomato juice, put tomato juice on it. That's supposed to stop the smell. But I never did wear, was never able to wear those trousers again. Oh, that's too bad. It was jeans, <laughs> yeah. I got another pair. Yeah, but in a primitive situation, being sprayed with a skunk isn't easy. Then you go out in the bay, and hold, it was summer though, so maybe the water was it 70 wasn't degrees. Too bad. I don't remember yeah. it just being awful that way. All I know is that anything to get rid of that smell. You weren't, and then you were naked out in the water? No, no, no. Oh. Just. Just uh, <laughs> my legs. Okay. <laughs> I didn't take a, go in the whole way. Just it just sprayed the lower part of my leg. Yeah, so yeah. I could manage. Yeah, those were good times. Uh, it was fun. Later yeah. on, you know, you left us boys alone. It was probably a dangerous thing to do. We had guns and all that stuff. So. I know, yeah. it's amazing, you so yeah. survived. Well, I know, yeah. I was digging sand caves in the uh, corner there and I got deep far enough in and I thought, what happens if this cave's on top of me? But it didn't. But then since that time I've read about boys doing that and being alive. I've heard things alive. happening like mm -hmm. that. Just like kids shooting each other, not meaning to, yeah. accidentally, you know. It can happen. Yeah. But. I didn't realize how dangerous it was, to tell yeah. you the truth. And Jed, of course, was the one that kind of encouraged the boys to do that kind of thing. So. He was safety-minded when, you know, the firing line and uh, blah, blah. We had, of course, Bud Lewis stopped down there one time and visited us, and so did uh, that other police officer. There was a police officer, uh, I Sims. The, the one that had a heart attack. That was Sims. When yeah. he was 35, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ray terrible. Sims, Ray Sims, I think. Ray was. Sims, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I saw his picture for years. Yeah. Now, speaking of pictures at your old uh, house there, there was always a, a nice looking gentleman there uh, on the wall with a hat on and he had a fishing pole over his shoulder. Oh, my dad, probably. Uh, Mr. Van Fleet. And, yeah. Uh, uh, what did he do for a living? He worked for, um, well, he worked, started out working for General Petroleum. In the managerial section, you know, he didn't work in a station. Uh huh. And then uh, my uncle started uh, company Van Fleet and Durkee, and it was a service station, one of the first ones, and they sold shell gasoline. And so my dad worked for them then, and uh, up until he retired. Yeah, but he wrote a book, didn't he? And he wrote a book then after he retired, yeah. Oh, what was the name of that book? Steelhead to a Fly. Yeah, he was big into fishing. Yeah. 
He loved fishing, always. Yeah. yeah. Well, his mother encouraged that because, see, he was lived in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And they had a summer place over across the bay. And they used to go over there, and his mother would, I guess, encourage them, you know, to learn about the birds and what their names were. And, oh, you know, really? That kind really? of thing, yeah. And then fishing, they learned to fish. And, well, what did uh, his folks do for uh, life? His father was a judge. He was a oh. federal judge. Uh -huh. yeah. And, uh, of course, his mother was a stay-at-home mom. Would that be, uh, be in the 1800s? Um, my dad was born in 1890. 1890, yeah. My goodness. And he was there for the San Francisco earthquake. Oh, oh. And they had to take the family over across the bay to their summer place. Because so, the whole town was destroyed. Yeah, it was almost destroyed, all mm. down. You know, it burned downtown. See, they lived on the west side of Van Ness Avenue, mm -hmm. and I guess the fire stopped at Van Ness, so mm. they didn't, their house survived. Yeah. A lot of them didn't. Now, uh, your father, Mr. Van Fleet, uh, when did he pass away? In 1967. Oh, I never was, met him. Never he met was him. 79. Yeah. 67. That was just 67. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have been in college then. Yeah. But see, he um, he lived in in uh, California mm -hmm. until just the last. When was he up with us for? Not very long before he died. Then, but mm -hmm. we did move him up so that he was there in Portland in an apartment. Was he a nice guy? He was a very nice guy. Good father? Yeah, and uh, good storyteller. He liked to tell stories, you know. <laughs> yeah, he kind of liked Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he... Uh, well, he must have encouraged you to be intellectual and go to college then. Oh, yeah, my sister too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my sister, um, she was four and a half years older than me. Okay, I don't think I ever met her either. Yeah, well, she died a couple of years. Has it been a year? It was just about a year ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Yeah. She was 92. Oh, long life is in your family. Yeah. Yeah, I had a great aunt who lived to be 100. Oh, oh. That was amazing in those days. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting scary for me. I don't know if I want to live that long. You know, I just but a lot of people are nowadays. Yes, I noticed that. I'm gonna go see Ruthie Ziegler with Luann one of these days. So Luann promises, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But then something always happens. She never quite <laughs> completes her uh, what she says. But and uh, Ruthie's about 93 now. And, wow. Uh, she tells me on the phone that. Uh, she feels like hell or something like that and she can't move very good and her niece is trying to get her into an assisted living place. Oh, that'd be good, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I can see now that you hate to leave your home. Well, you hate to lose your independence. I think that's the thing that bothers you. And you get into an assisted living and it's more like being in a hospital or something, you know. Mm -hmm. They serve you your dinners whether you like it or not. You get to drive a car, though, if you can drive, right? You what? You get to drive a car, though, don't yeah. you? You keep your car, yeah. Yeah, until they decide you can. Well, yeah, but you're, 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 uh, I'm getting uh, stodgy in my ways, and so I like my yard, I like my house. And the idea of moving out of that and going to another house, or even a better house, it just, uh, nah, it's not worth the trouble anymore. I tricked my wife, you know, I, we got this house fairly inexpensive, it's not much of a house. And I said, well, this is our starter house, but uh, <laughs> one thing leads to another, and we're still in the same house, and that's, that's fine. How many bedrooms does that have, house have? Five. I thought it had quite I, a I few. had to add two because oh. I had extra children. Well, I wondered about that, because you did. You had four, didn't you? Or, no, you had four, four, yeah, that includes the bad David. <laughs> Matthew, the youngest, and... Melody, who's uh, I think she's going to be a writer, and she's practicing her art. She might go to Bosnia on a mission for two years, and write um, something back and forth. I don't know what she's doing exactly. She's been uh, down in uh, 
Has she been in Yosemite? Yes. I yeah. thought I heard she was there for a while. She was doing a uh, outdoor um, thing, a Christian thing where you would put on dirty clothes and put on 80 pounds of backpack on your back and then you'd climb steep mountains and you'd pant and you'd puff and you'd sweat and you'd eat crappy food and drink water with iodine in it or something like that and uh, then the point is you get so broken down that you see God and uh, I never quite worked that way with me but I uh -huh. we did it Carol and I did that about 10 did years really? ago yes it's a very miserable time I haven't heard of that particularly oh they all there's a lot of people Dan your son Dan has a no 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 it's not him no, I'm thinking Maggie is it Maggie one of her his daughters yeah she was a missionary in uh, somewhere. In Nepal. Nepal. What's she doing now? Have you heard from her? Yeah, she's, uh, well, I hear Dan calls usually close to once a week. Sometimes he'll skip a week, you know, mm -hmm. when he comes up. But um, she's uh, working in a restaurant there in St. Louis now. Oh, okay. So she gave up the missionary stuff. Well, sort of. I don't know if she's really completely given it up. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough, tough business to be in. Well, you can't call it business. Ministry. Ministry, excuse me. Yeah, she was spent a couple of years in Nepal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it's kind of hard, really. Don't you, Cher? Probably was. I don't know. She seemed to enjoy it to some extent. She really liked it. She liked the people there and all that. Of course, they worked with the poorer people. Yeah, Andrew did too when he was in Honduras. Yeah. And uh, I decided it's not the life for me, but that that's fine for, for Melody. Well, uh, the University of Portland has a lot of that sort of thing that goes on. They, uh, you know, one of the girls that uh, had just graduated from the University of Portland was killed in Haiti when the... Oh! Molly oh. Hightower. Yeah. Oh. She was killed in Haiti, and then... Uh, Rachel Prasinski was there with her, but she was in another part of the building, and mm -hmm. she was able to get out. Mm. But uh, anyway, that was quite a thing. Yeah, yeah. But they were working then because the people in Haiti were so poor. Of course, now they're just... They're living in the blue tarps, mess. yeah. Oh, it must be a mess down there. Yeah, what do you do with millions, tens of millions of people who don't have a thing? And yeah. Uh, they were hard to govern them before they were in anarchy was uh, taking over so yeah it's a tough one yeah um, speaking of housing what made you and Chester decide to move to our side of the town and within a block of uh, Chester's well we brother? had the property before you or mother and dad moved there really uh-huh we got it through Bob Narver I think that was how your dad oh died out. Chet managed to catch on to it, and they were just opening it up, and they were, we weren't ready to build then, but we did get the lot, and uh, then when Cher was expected, we needed to get a bigger house. One bathroom wasn't quite enough. Right, right. So we went overboard and put in about three or four. Or one and a half or something that went yeah. in the split doors. So but, Narver yeah. has something to do with that. Of course, Narver, he had the... Stid's tamale thing uh, on the Oyster right. Bar block. Right. And he also made food for uh, the military, didn't he, or something like camp food? I don't know about that. I didn't. Uh, oh. Yeah. But I know that he was there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think he controlled most of the block down there at one time. Really? I yeah, I didn't know if he owned it or not. Uh, of course, uh, Louis Charles bought the block from the Bickle sisters, right? Yeah. And uh, Fred Bickle was the one that used to kind of be in charge, wasn't he, before your grandfather took over? Uh, I think he passed away, then his sisters took over. That's what I heard. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and then, then that was when I think they decided to sell, finally. Well, the story I heard is that uh, Louis Charles was quite a um, persuasive person. He was, very. And uh, so he, after talking and talking, talked him into selling it to him. I think I the price was 200000 or something like that. Maybe it's 125000 I don't remember. Quite a bargain nowadays, you know. Well, I'll say. 
So, and then he, uh, Lewis Charles died shortly after he bought it, because he bought it in 57 time, 57, and he died on my birthday, May 1st, 57. I was 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, I know he died in 57. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we took your grandmother to Hawaii in 58. I remember that picture, yeah. Yeah, and Cher was just four years old. That was the first time you went to Hawaii, Cher. Yeah. Yeah. Was uh, what did they think of you, Lewis, Charles, and Elizabeth, when the uh, Chester shows up on the doorstep with you in tow? Oh, I had met them before. Oh. Yes. Um, Not before you were dating Chester. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, but after I was dating him, and uh, actually, um, Stanford played in the Rose Bowl that year. Mm -hmm. when I met your dad, uh, Jeff, and. Uh, so uh, they took me down to the Rose Bowl with them, with Chet and all of us. And then uh, Richard and Jane also went down with us. Oh, one big happy family. Yeah. More or yeah. less. <laughs> so Jane and I stayed together and Chet and Richard stayed together there at the, where was it, Hollywood something or other. What year was that then? Um, I'm trying to think. It must have been about 39. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. See, that would, uh, would my sister be born by then? Yes, yeah, she would have been born by then. Well, they, uh, uh Lewis, Charles, and Elizabeth, they, they accepted you okay and... Yeah, they seemed to. Everything seemed to be fine. And were they nice I met people? my parents. What? Were they nice people? Oh yes, they were very yeah. nice people. You know, sometimes uh, the patriarch of the family can be arrogant, pushy, and nasty. And oh no, Grandfather no. Waxmuth was never that way. Uh -huh. He was always, uh, oh, he always was dressed so perfectly, you know, and he had those uh, diamond um, cufflinks. Oh. Always wore a diamond? shirt with cufflinks. Diamond. Uh huh. Sheesh. And uh, he always, you know. Was, even down when he'd visit us in Oysterville, he always was in a suit. That's know? how I remember him, yes. Yeah, he was always in a yeah. suit, except when he worked in his yard. Then he wore old tattery clothes and uh -huh. worked out there with the roses. And the Tucker clothes. says that some of those roses there are still the original roses. I can believe it. I didn't know roses lived that long. If you take care of them, they do live quite a while. Mm -hmm. The trouble with some of them is they're getting too much shade from those trees. Tucker's trees. Yeah. <laughs> They've grown so big. Yeah, Tucker admits that he's going to have to do something with the sidewalk. It's all buckled and bent, and he's got quotes which are in the tens of thousands that take care of all that mess there. And Oh my goodness, I told my son Andrew, don't let him put trees out in your sidewalk, but he did, so in the uh, time I'm gone. It's his problem, yeah. His problem, <laughs> I'll give advice. Well, Patty, uh, you, so you drove down, would you drive down or take the train? We drove down. What kind of car? <sighs> I think they had a Cadillac then. Back then? It was 39. It must have been a little crowded, wasn't it? I guess it was. I... Six people? No, yeah. more than that. No, Dan, Patty, you and Chester, and... No, Jane and Richard. Jane, Jane, not Patty. Yeah. I'm no, Patty was up. their daughter. She didn't come until later. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. It was Jane was Richard's first... Jane. Yeah. So well, there's a question whether he had a marriage before Jane or not, but that was... We tell everybody that he was married several, six times or something like that. I know he was married a lot. Oh, uh, one at a time, though. He was not yes. a Mormon. <laughs> well, Jane, would you get along with her okay? Oh, yeah. She was a nice gal. Yeah. How did Richard seem to you at that time? Um, he seemed okay. He always kind of dressed, you know, fancy, had his hair, you know. <laughs> Slick back just so and all that, but was he dabbling in crime at that time, or is he just uh, not that I knew of? Yeah, he was a young man, I guess. No, he was. Yeah, he was the last of the boys, wasn't he? Yes, he was the youngest. Yeah, a little bit younger than Chet, because there was about ten years between Chet and Dan. <coughs> uh huh. And then, of course, your dad was the oldest. Yeah. But. Um, 
So, probably about 11 or 12 years between. I mean, in my generation specifically, it was my father, and there's Chester, and there's Richard. Wasn't there someone else? Or is that just three boys? Three well, boys. there was Dan. Dan. Dan, who died early. Yes. And that means it made a horrible, horrible effect on Chet. Oh. Because he saw him when his eyes went up, you know, and he was, he died at home. Uh-huh. He had uh, pneumonia and developed one of those embolisms in the leg, and it traveled up to his heart, I guess. Oh. Killed him, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So he was only, what was he? 20. What? 20. That's what he used He was in his 20s, I know that, yeah. But it was really hard on Chet. Uh, when you started getting involved in the family, was the restaurant doing fine then? Or was it yeah, it was doing very well. Uh, that was 1930-something, right? They had just built that uh, corner, you know, where the food section is. Yes. They just built that. Uh -huh. um, they used to have just that little side room, and they did the cooking up in front, right in back of the... Yeah, the old hood's still there. Yeah, right. It was a small place. Yeah. That was the days when uh, my father used to shuck oysters, come home from school, go down there and shuck oysters, apparently. Really? Yeah, and uh, I always thought that Lewis Charles kind of enslaved his boys to, to work in the restaurant. And in those days, that was fine. And uh, my dad, uh, he barely finished high school, I think. He says Lewis Charles only went to third grade. That's right. That's what I always heard. Yeah, so he's a kind or of... an oyster bill. Yeah. Oysterville, that's right, yeah. Yeah, they were living there then, but... No, he didn't like school. But he used to watch the news on TV. Uh-huh. And he always said to look at the paper. I He must have been able... He must have learned to read just a little bit. But without Grandma Walksmith, he couldn't have handled the business. She was an excellent bookkeeper. She was a good bookkeeper, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, that made all the difference. She was always nice to you, wasn't she? Very nice. Yeah. She was always nice to me, too. So. Yeah. And she was very nice to share, too. She remembers having a couple of very nice conversations with her. She didn't often talk very much. Yeah, I tried to talk uh, some deep family stuff with her. She wouldn't do that. She wouldn't, wouldn't talk that way. And one time during... Uh, we used to have those Christmas celebrations. She was up and around. She was at someone's house. And my wife and I gave her a present of a Bible. I remember that. And it was very offensive to her. She slapped that thing down and laid it on and went to the next present with her usual, Woo! You know, she was always excited uh -huh. to have presents. And uh, what do you think uh, the, the employee parties they had to have for the... Uh, owners. You remember those things? Oh, yes. It Wait. was kind of ridiculous in a way. I don't think Chet ever really enjoyed them very much. How about your dad? I never asked him. I don't know. I don't think my dad would be one to enjoy that kind of stuff. No, I don't think any of them enjoyed it that yeah. much, but it was done every day. Well, that was my biggest fear. If I come up and join the corporation, Am I going to have to be the subject of these birthday parties? From, <laughs> and uh, fortunately, the time I got there, uh, the whole generation was gone, and no one remembered, and, and no one asked, and that was fine with me. I just uh, I couldn't do that. No. Chester didn't show up for one of them, right? I don't remember that. He had too much to drink, and uh, maybe that was it. Maybe that was no. Maybe it was Tucker's that wedding reception. That after we split. Yeah, yeah. Because he was drinking an awful lot by that time. Yeah. He really was. It's too bad. Well, what in his family upbringing would have caused that, I wonder? Well, his father, you know, had a problem with alcohol. Uh -huh. And uh, Chet remembers riding on the streetcar with his dad when his dad was pretty well loaded. Uh huh. And he said it was so embarrassing. And then he went in and did the same thing. Yeah. But Frank um, Walksmith had, a, had a, I think, a problem with drink, and Lucille certainly did. Hmm. There toward the end. Frank being the son of who? Frank was Harry's son. Harry's son, okay. Yeah. And what did Harry do for a living? He worked in the oyster beds, largely. Oh, as so as he I was know. part of the family too for a while. Yeah. Well, he was, yeah, he was a brother, you know. 
Yeah, so but was, he worked in the oyster beds down there in Willapaw Bay. Uh -huh. I don't think he had any connection to the Oregon Oyster Company. Oh, he was uh, in the, he he working at somebody else. Yeah. Oh, oh. And then what Cap? What's what he do? Cappy was a um, streetcar conductor for quite a while. Mm hmm. Is that where his name came from, Cappy or Captain? I don't know. I. No. Oh. I I met him and I, but I didn't ever know him really well. Uh huh. Because he was still around. He lived in the basement there when I. Yeah, there's a little hole in Tucker's basement down there, and I was told that's where Cappy used to live. And yeah. It seemed like uh, kind of strange, but in those days, uh, who knows what, uh, maybe and I'll... They had uh, a toilet down in the basement there. Yeah, I remember that toilet, yeah. Yeah. And did it have a drawstring on it? I don't remember that. I don't remember that particularly. But anyway, and uh, I guess get water out of the thing there where the... Wash is done, you know. Yes, yeah. The wash tubs, but... So I've been making plans when I get old and decrepit, uh, which in-law I want to stay at. And so I, uh, my son David and his wife, I said, Gee, you have a nice house with a whole vacant attic up there. I could live up there. Can you save me a spot there in the next, I don't know, 10, 20 years? And and, and, and I need somebody to change my diapers. And they said, no. <laughs> Imagine that. No, it's like that. Well, imagine, though, you wouldn't like doing those stairs as you get older. Stairs get to be a real headache. Yeah, I'm going to be in trouble getting up and out of a couch at times. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, then, uh, yeah, I remember uh, Hazel and my father put in that uh, electric stair thing that went up and down there. Yeah. They did? Yes. I, I didn't understand the concept of getting old and your body doesn't respond well, how difficult stairs are so when they put it in I thought it was kind of a silly uh, thing to have but now I understand why now you, it makes good sense yeah. yeah yeah you never got to work at the oyster bar then huh I um, used to once in a while take cash when your dad played golf on Thursdays oh I used to go down and take cash during the noon hour and mm. then I would meet my friends and go shopping afterward Downtown. Downtown. Before Martin they have Frank, malls. Lipman Wolves. Uh, you but know. they're all gone. I know. And all the shoppers are gone from downtown. Yeah. They're we all have, out in the malls. Yes, that's because uh, we're fortunate enough to have homeless with cardboard signs begging people and uh, with their pets there. See, so that uh, suburbanite people don't seem to like that very much to be stopped every block by people. No. And uh, the parking, over this is the parking that's so expensive. And overtime parking is thirty-five dollars now for a ticket. Uh Yeah, and but then if you park in any of the parking garages, you pay quite a lot, you know. Uh, well, the city has a parking lot, Smart Park, which are Smart a little park. more. It's um, a little better, but really, but the uh, Washington Square, they're not fair. They don't charge for any parking. They should. The malls don't charge either. I mean, you know, you can go down to Jensen Beach, you have no problem with parking. Yeah, it's not fair for downtown. Yeah. You need to have homeless out there begging and stopping people as they go in places, and, and you need to have uh, dogs running all over the place, and you need to have meter mates, and that, that would level the playing field. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, downtown, it's. Uh, I remember going downtown as a kid, and at Christmas time, and the whole streets would be full of thousands of people. Oh yes, and the big windows they'd have it. Myron and Frank oh, yes. with all the toys and that. things. Remember that? Uh huh. And the Santa Claus. They always had a Santa Claus, I think, in the window, didn't they? Yeah. Well, there's one upstairs later on. Oh yeah. You take our kids up there to sit on Santa. It was a long wait. I'd sit in that crummy cafeteria waiting. <laughs> Did you ever go on the rail car? As a child, I think so, the monorail, yeah. But everything's gone now. I know. Santa Claus isn't there anymore. No. Yeah. Matter of fact, he never existed. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, all the toys are gone. They put a, uh, a luxury hotel in it and with a luxury uh, dining area, the restaurant. And uh, it's not doing that good, but uh, that, that's progress. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, didn't did Macy take over? Yes, That's Macy has it. Yeah, I see their ads, but I haven't been in since it's been Macy's. Oh, well, you can go to the mall and go to a Macy's there. It's the same thing. I don't really want to. You're not I go to Target and oh. Ross's. And <laughs> oh, oh. I try not to shop at all, so I, I'm not much one for fancy clothes. I mean, Grandfather Louis Charles and I are miles apart. Uh, I got some gold from him second or third hand, you know, gold cufflinks. And I gave those to Corey, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he's big in nostalgia, so he can have the gold. And then the gold ring, one, there were two or three gold rings from using those diamonds you talked about, I guess. Yeah. And Doug has one gold ring with a big diamond in it, and I had another. And uh, I took out the diamond and gave it to my wife, and she wears a pennant once in a while. Oh. And then the gold, that ring, I gave that to Tucker, and he has that in a safe somewhere. And he asked me the other day, do I want it back because the price of gold's so high? He says, no, you go ahead and cash it in and spend it, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any interest in that stuff. No, no. Well, people don't pay attention to that. You know, at church, everybody wears jeans. and Yes. It just is unbelievable, the difference. And Even at the baptism, people that usually used to we wear very elegant clothes or jeans. Yes. Of course, they were very neat, fine-looking jeans. <laughs> well, a lot of jeans, uh, the more holes they have, and the more they cost. I know. Yeah. I, I never could understand that one. Well, and the, the more they sag on your bottom, the more cool they are. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably study a little sociology and anthropology <laughs> to see the current trends and all that. <laughs> and all the uh, tattoos. You've got to have a lot of tattoos. Tattoos are big now. Yeah, it. Uh, I, I don't quite understand that Any either. Any of your kids get tattoos? No, no, nobody in the t family has I don't has think anyone in our family has a tattoo, do they? Well, that's because we're not cool, I guess. You're going to be right. cool, you got to have tattoos. And, and it, it helps to be dead broke, and then that way you can take every dime you earn and spend a fortune for the tattoos. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Now, um, Harry, so Harry stayed down below, and he oh, lived Harry out his life. Harry stayed in Oysterville. Oysterville, yeah. Cappy was down below. Okay, where did Harry pass away then? Uh, he passed away, let's see, it was uh, before we went down there, sometime in the late 40s. Uh-huh. I don't remember exactly when. But he just worked for other oyster companies then? Yeah. You've been to, you've been to Oysterville lately, haven't you? Uh, we went down for a weekend, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's big changes. Um, you know, the newest invention in oyster farming, of course, is the oyster hatchery. And that is where they artificially grow the oyster larvae in large above-ground pools. Oh, really? Yeah, and this is what saved the oyster industry, since the Pacific oyster doesn't reproduce too well. And so, uh... I think they only breed in Hood River, don't they? Yeah, De Ba Bay. Yeah. So now there are several places that have giant sheds with giant tanks, pump in the seawater, heat it up a little bit, yeah. and grow larvae, feed them algae. But the trouble is, with the environment changing, the uh, CO2 in the air has been absorbed into the seawater, making uh, the seawater is slightly acid, so it's eating up the little shells of little larvae. Larvae being almost microscopic, and so the, uh, they die. And so now the oyster hatcheries don't have any seed. What? And, yeah, it's true. And then I just talk, I called up a guy yesterday who has a Whiskey Creek oyster farm in, uh, oyster hatchery in uh, Neatars Bay. And I said, what, what's going on with that? So now it's also affecting barnacles and mussels. So you're not seeing as much barnacles and mussels. So it's not a good time to be in the shellfish business. No, if you ever decide to invest your money in that. I won't. <laughs> People if ask I me, had any to invest. <laughs> well, I, I feel bad selling out the old family oyster farm on one hand, but uh, I could see bad things happening. You know, things that didn't happen when 
Lewis Charles bought that property. Matter of fact, didn't he kind of connive, connive his way to that by, by having having secondhand people buy the pieces of property in Yakuna Bay? I'm not Bay? sure, Louie. I never yeah. heard the real scoop on That's the kind of thing that your grandparents wouldn't talk about, you know. Oh. oh. So, oh. I wouldn't hear that kind of thing, you know. I got all the newspaper articles, and uh, he was well hated down there. Oh, really? For doing that. Uh, the descendants of Daniel Boone were down there. They had some pieces of property, and uh, he would hire somebody else to buy it for him so his name wouldn't get involved. That way the price wasn't inflated. I see. And all those little farmers down in Yaquina Bay uh, were starving, trying to go out there with the tongs and tong up the native oysters, which were disappearing. Yeah. And no one knows why they disappeared. No. But you can't. Well, I thought it was because of that wood plant up. The pollution, maybe. Yeah, the pollution. Because there was an awful lot of pollution there for a while. I remember your grandfather fought that. Yeah, we lost that one. Johnson Brothers or something. C.D. Like Johnson that. Mill. Yeah. And then uh, Georgia Pacific came later on. And uh, who knows? I don't know. It was... Yeah. But the... Uh, you can't grow well. I, well last time I was scuba, di scuba diving down there, I went underwater and found oh thousands of little native oysters. Really? Yes, but they're so small that you can't uh, use them because it takes two thousand per gallon, and nobody wants to pay three or four hundred dollars per gallon for oysters. Well, I remember they were probably about so big when I remember yes. that they used to get them. Yeah. They were wonderful oysters. I didn't like them. You didn't? Well, they had a coppery taste in them. I didn't after know, flavor. notice that. I uh, would have them in oyster stew yeah. and uh, have them fried. I didn't ever eat them raw. Oh. I never had any desire to eat a raw oyster. <laughs> <laughs> Not to eat them alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a family slogan for years until they yeah. changed all that stuff. and Different thing. <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to turn this thing off now and Good. come back another time here. First, we're going to 